So I'm going to focus more on the practical side of cybercrime. Thank you, Hivan. Hope the best for your PhD discussion, I hope soon. Yeah. We're living in a, in a place where humans develop through their ability of imagination an artificial life that goes on with reality. A life which is, we can commit the same crime physically and through technology. And we tried our best to use the technology for the benefit of humans. And it became now computers and online networking, the central or the heart center, the lay, we, we base our businesses, social life, personal data, it's all in the cyberspace. We have a lot of information, but I think we did not make sure that we could control such amount of information. And criminal threats are already here. I, I know that today there are several governmental bodies that has a cyber crime attack or a hacking or destruction of the data. Now, Kuwait, an emerging country, recently legislated through the parliaments certain laws which she mentioned. And they are based on, when we, we, we want to define the cybercrime law, it's basically either in the cyberspace online or offline in a digital or computer or a device. So it's not necessarily in the online network. So here we can see the, the first article of the Kuwaiti law mentions automated electronic systems, electronic data, and then moves on to mention devices, magnetic devices, and information technology and digital devices. Now, I truly think that the Kuwaiti Exactly, the Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Justice did not put a correct priority into fighting and combating crimes. Because rather than focusing on the crimes related to security, digital security, to the mass destruction of the data, to privacy, they focused on media. So we have 4,000 cases each year in the prosecution related to tweeting. So what about the real threats? Who, who did commit such crime? How many cases? I worked on several cases related to cybercrime. Recently, we have ongoing cases with Dubai, 4.6 million Kuwaiti KD stolen from a public company in the stock market, and it was disclosed. So, the Capital Market Authority is a major player here, not only CETRA, not only the prosecution, not only the police through the department. So, it's not only about freedom of expression and free speech, it's more about damage physically, financially, morally, and the control of such damage in an open space. I'm gonna give an example within these three main laws that were regulated in a way to cover the anti-information technology crime, but switched to another different topic which is criminal media law. Usually, at the beginning of the, of the law in the definition part, we can see 
phishing, identity fraud, electronic fraud, hacking, etc., terrorist, cyber terrorist attacks. And then there is just one article, it's in the fifth paragraph, switching to the discussion into the privacy of public and financial information. And the Kuwaiti law states that there is an imprisonment up to three years, and then it could increase to six years if it's related to a public employee or a governmental employee. And the fine could go to 4,000 in case of returning to commit the same crime. Then we can see that if we publish such private information, spreading this, such information, again, there is one year imprisonment. So the implication of these laws should be a sanction, a criminal sanction, or a civil sanction related to compensation, or administrative procedures through the governmental bodies. Here we have another article related to damaging the telecommunication companies, so distracting or disturbing the communication between different entities, like what is happening recently in one of the governmental bodies, there is a disconnection between it and another body because of cross-border crime. This is another problematic issue in chasing cybercrime, that it is definitely related to an international person, entity, organized crime organization. And then there should be a cooperation between different prosecution departments in Kuwait, in the GCC, in the UK. And I'll give you a, an, ex uh, an example just in, in a minute. So, the law did not state hacking. See, the law stated illegal entry. So, assuming that it could be through a physical entry, not through the internet, which is a broader definition and much better than hacking, I would say. What? And, and the law punishes illegal entry in respect of there is a damage or destruction of the data or misuse of the data. So the act itself is a crime that is punishable by the criminal court. Here we can see that one of the article divided the actions, either it is client accounts, banks, illegal entry, destroy or forgery, governmental information, medical documents, and blackmail and threats. I've seen cases in all these aspects in Kuwaiti court. However, I would see, I would say that the court issued verdicts that are lean. I think the awareness of the seriousness of this crime should be raised to the judicial body by SETFRA, by other organizations, because we tend to be scared more of physical things. We, we, even as, as a, a humans, cannot imagine the risks of something that cannot be seen necessarily through hacking or through destroying data or stealing money from the banks. And here we have also disrupting accesses, accessing the electronic softwares or data or or even putting a virus through the USB in this computer and then getting the data or destroying it. Also, crimes that could lead to up to three years imprisonment as per the Kuwaiti law. Now, when we work in a case, we have the police, which is the Department of Electronic and Cyber Crime. They, so, so they are within the Ministry of Interior. And then, the prosecution is investigating the crime. They, are in, they have a really new, good, well-built building, but they usually work 
on media law cases rather than cyber crime cases. And the reason is that usually they don't know who's the suspect. So it's not easy to tackle the criminal. And then we have the criminal court, and they usually issue imprisonment, fines, closure of sites, or <coughs> confiscation. So they usually take the devices if it's a mobile or so. And we have the administrative body, which usually block sites. Sometimes the websites like ask for data, for bank data, while they are fake sites, not true ones. It happens a lot in Kuwait to receive messages to enter our personal data. So I have a couple of examples in the Kuwaiti courts. Simplistic one would be hacking one of the Kuwaiti banks and uh, stealing 3,000 KD. The court gave the uh, committer a sentence of one month, which is, and, and, and it was a weird discussion with the suspect. I asked him, why did you only took 3,000? He said, that's what I needed. So, and he only got one month imprisonment. I'm his alter attorney. Still, I was surprised. I, it is a serious crime. However, are we aware of how serious it is? Another case, a girlfriend entered a, a social media account of her boyfriend or he was a boyfriend, not a husband. So, and she changed the password, and, she, and the court gave her six months imprisonment. So, okay, we have getting financial from a Kuwaiti bank, and so it, it is. It is kind of a reflection that the judicial body needs to understand how serious this is economically, socially, and in, re in relation to security. So in that case, we have three things. This is an ongoing case. It's published last month in the stock market page. We are working on it with the Kuwaiti prosecution and Dubai prosecution. A phishing email. So let's assume Hiba and your friend, I, I assume, or Manar, let's say, all right. Hiba receives an email from Manar, the same signature, the same font, size, color, with an attachment saying very important, or let's say final PhD thesis reviewed, yeah? And once she click on the PDF, and this happened, in Kuwait, which costs the company 4.6 million, 54 million dirhams, because it's going to the UAE. And so once she pushes on the PDF, the attacker took all the information from the system, and about 10,000 exchanged emails from a public company and then the attacker noticed that there is an exchange, one exchanged email between this company and another public company in Dubai. So Kuwait, listed company and a, a listed company in Dubai, stating that please transfer 4.6 million KD to our bank account signed. So they just took this page, changed the bank account details, and sent an email to the financial asking them to pay. That's it. And the payment went through. And then we went to a cyber crime company in Kuwait. It's a very good company. I didn't put it because of advertising issues. And we can see how they were successful in logging through from Nigeria, Ghana, and UK proxy. So it seems that they are an organized 
organization. And they did make an in-depth analysis into 10,000 exchanged emails. And this led to checking how much is there in the international aspect, global aspect. And I saw that last two years, it's been $18 billion stolen through the same method, which is hacking. All right, so we asked the company who did it. They got the location of the people who got the money in UAE, and that's it. And then we ask the Dubai prosecution to check, and they, I cannot disclose how much we got back still because it's an ongoing case, but I would say they did catch two, one of Emirati and another European guy, and three, they escaped, they couldn't arrest them. Now, my concerns in Kuwait for now, and also global-wise, is how will we deal with AI cybercrime? How will we, how are we dealing with the dark page in Bitcoin? Now there is another live going there. It's not regulated. We can sell. I, yesterday I saw the prices of killing is $45,000 for a head. So they deal with Bitcoin. How can we deal with these challenges? So uh, yesterday I met head of the competition authority, asked him, what will you, how, how are you considering the Bitcoin? It is a property, it is a money in a way, and we have to tackle this issue. He said, all right, see, we have a mess, cartels already here, putting the prices. I have a control mess, you don't. You're still in the mess, you cannot control it, the cyber, cyberspace. And my issue now, which, is, which I can con contribute to, is the criminal media law and right of expression and free speech. I think the cybercrime laws in Kuwait shifted their focus toward the wrong direction, to the, toward the easy direction, toward tweeting or to, toward very basic crimes and forget, forgot about the real issues that cost the economy heavily. I finished my 20 on time, 20 minutes, yeah. Any questions? Sure. All right, one minute. So thank you very much for listening. <laughs>